excited today because this is Armenian Institute's rock and roll equivalent poetry evening with Lola and many of you know Lola already and if you don't she's a New York based poet where she regularly reads her work She's been invited to five international poetry festivals all over the world, from Lima to Ramallah to Santiago. She'll be appearing in a virtual uh, uh, poetry festival very soon in August. She's also curating a poetry reading series at Zohrab Information Center in Manhattan. And since 2006, she has promoted Armenian culture with text, translations, and audio for Armenian Poetry Project. Her fantastic blog, if you are not familiar, please go and Google it. Lola is the author of several books, The Accidental Observer, Advice to a Poet, and Moon in the Cusp of My Hand. Uh, we'll be sharing some links in the chat line uh, to her books at some point. Oh, Vasken is showing the book, so if we can maybe spotlight Vasken so we can, we can see it. Uh, yeah, so you can get some of her books we'll, we'll be sharing. Uh, oh, you have a whole collection there. Uh, I first heard of Lola when I visited her blog, the Armenian Poetry Project, and it's quite unique in the sense it has an extremely wide range of poetry, old, new, contemporary, classics, English, Armenian, Western, Eastern, anything. It's very well organized. Um, every time I'm impressed, and she keeps on doing it on her own. I asked her today, how big is your team? And she just stared at me. Uh, and then I discovered her own poetry on the website and immediately felt she's talking to me very warmly, very urgently, very intense. And when I met her in person, she's just like that, warm and intense. So, Lola, can I, can I introduce you in your own words? We were talking earlier, and you said, <laughs> She said, I've been a very lucky dog. And I love that you're this full of life, positive attitude to poetry. So tell us a bit about your love of poetry and your poetry project. I was extremely lucky that growing up, I had literature in four languages uh, in my, my secondary school. And uh, you'll see in my poetry some influences of 18th century French poetry, where there was a system the classics, uh, Armenian poetry, and the knowledge of key figures uh, in Armenian literature and history. Some Arabic, which is my weakest language, I would say, and, uh, and English, which is the, the language that I have been using since 1979. So for 25 years, I was a ceramic artist, but I always loved poetry. And I started dabbling a little bit uh, in writing and started the Armenian Poetry Project. And I saw that there were a lot of visitors to the page. And I had the feeling that, that this was going to be a very useful project to Armenians and to those who might be curious about Armenian literature. And I've been running it now uh, pretty, pretty much single-handedly since 2006. There are close to 3,000 pieces of poetry in various languages, some book announcements, uh, a prize uh, that we ran for about seven years with the Armenian Student Association of the United States, a very old organization, uh, and um, lots of translations. I do not post only in Armenian. I post uh, poems by Armenians, about Armenians in various languages, uh, mostly Armenian English and French, because I speak these fluently. So um, I welcome anyone to write to me at the Armenian Poetry Project at gmail.com and submit their work. If it's not posted, I'm happy to look at it and post it. If it's translated, I ask that you specify who the translator is. And I'll be happy to incorporated in the project. Susan will be reading, and if you don't know, Susan Patti is our own Armenian Institute's Susan. <laughs> and um, she's Lola's good friend, and she'll be reading one of her poetry pieces today. 
How, how do you know each other, Susan? Well, uh, we, gosh, it's a long family history, I think, because we, uh, the families knew each other. Lolo's father is a famous photographer and um, came to London on one of his many tours and, and, and uh, taking pictures around the world and, and, and shot pictures of Levon and me. And we talked, I uh, got to know him. But then in, while I was living in Boston more recently, um, I was very fortunate to spend some time with Lola through a, a close friend of ours, Tina Shakarian, who uh, I was kind of forgot to tell Tina about this tonight. Uh, Tina's great. Uh, and I just was so attracted to Lola. She's an irresistible force of nature, I think. And it comes through in her poetry, for sure. And we've had walks around New York together. Not, not quite like the one we're going to be talking about in the poem tonight, but it's a much more animated and fun walk. And, and I knew your sister and her husband from before they yes. had kids. Because That's, they came yeah, because they, several times to perform in New York. That's right. I have beautiful pictures of them in my kitchen on the wall. They might join us tonight because they remember those days too. Yeah, so it's a, it's a long history. Yeah. And I'm honored to be given a poem to read tonight, Lola. Thank you. Lola, you've, I know you've put together a mixed program of Armenian and English. Yes. Is it, do you often translate your own works? How does it work? Do you write first in Armenian, do you write first in English? I'm fascinated by this process. 40% uh, is Armenian original, the, the rest are in English, and I do my own translations when, whenever it's needed. And uh, uh, I've translated some of them into French because I, I did a reading in Quebec at the 20th, no, 30th. Uh, festival of the Trois-Rivières, uh, which is a very famous poetry festival. Uh, it's every fall, um, North American fall, of course, in Canada. And um, it's, it's a lovely, lovely place. So you have to read in French there or read, or somebody reads the translation, but everything must be translated into French. So it was a, it was a nice little project to translate some of my works. And today we'll be hearing some English and a few Armenian ones. And uh, while Adam is trying to get back, which we very much hope, hope so he can get back to, to our Zoom room, shall we start reading and hopefully he will join because his part is in the end anyway. So That's right. Oh, he's just joining. He is just joining. So... <laughs> I'm going to start uh, with a piece about the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which I miss tremendously. So, may we see the light at the end of this tunnel soon and can go back to our usual loving uh, In Search of Rilke at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, after a reading of our cave torso. A Sunday afternoon, the final lazy weekend of the summer, I escape to the cool, bright corridors of that art institution. I am in search of Apollo or Ritke. In the Hellenistic and Roman wing, I find Hermes, Eros, Heracles, headless torsos of young men and women, centaurs, athletes, and heroes. I turn around each statue and sepulcher, reading labels and descriptions. In desperation, I ask a guard, but she's clueless. I search for him in a cubiculum nocturnum, that is to say bedroom, in galleries, in the faces and camera lenses of tourists, finally finding him through old fashioned help, the humble assistance of the information desk clerk. There are two Apollos here, one in worse shape than the other, one slightly taller, one still resting against a marble trunk, one with more genitals intact, more of the hip areas defined with both feet, perfect toes and toenails. The Japanese tourist photographs her friend grabbing, or is it covering the genitals? I hear the guard laughing heartily. Men, women and children walk by, few stop by to look at the headless torso, few read the description, 
Few acknowledge that this was Apollo. This was the god of music and poetry, son of Zeus, father of Orpheus, one of the 12 Olympians, D.E. Consentes. Who cares for those lesser gods and heroes when Apollo is in the room? And still, I don't find Rilke, a man at least in some form or manner representing him, his essence, or a man who has read his work, a man aware of that dilemma called mid-career or life crisis. I wonder, if I tear a piece of paper, write in bold capital letters Rilke, and hold it up, Will someone stop and chat with me, sit and read with me that poem, ask me questions about it, maybe exchange something about himself, a revelation found through this encounter? If any answer to man's inner quest is to be found on earth, it could be at these feet or another work of art, at this museum or another like it, in this city or another metropolis such as the many found on this or other continents. And yet his torso is still suffused with brilliance from inside, like a lamp in which his gaze, now turned to low, gleams in all its power. The final stanza is by Rilke. It's a recent translation. Every decade or so he is retranslated to make his work amicable, let's say, to contemporary readers. The next poem is inspired also by a classical theme, the story of Orpheus. And it's something that I've struggled with, interested in for a very long time. Upon hearing the music of the Icelandic composer, Johan Johansson, I went back to read almost every story I could find, every translation of, by Virgil's work, of work, Virgil's work. And finally, when Johansson died a couple of years ago, I said, I must write about this. And I kept thinking about this story every time I was walking in the underground on my way to the office. There was a very long passage where I have to go up the stairs, down the stairs, and walk the entire station to get towards the south to get out directly into my building. Uh, especially at a snowstorm, it's very useful to have that underground passage. So when he died, I incorporated these two things, the subway station and the story of Orpheus. This one is in Armenian and, and Susan will be reading the English translation. Thank you, Susan. Niorki Paburinera. Polodos amen gentani euchun, mimian vokiner vochinchi stverner chenk, votisevs, sopokles, ajax. Yergaren, Niorki Paburinera. Yergaren uar mogot yep amen ardu. Ye pemena meni vikun go kalem istoret kia shavirneren. Armogoden, nyoki paburinera, Armogoden u karshahod, Petsamena du, ye pemena meni vikun go kalem volorvats burineren. Uren karnian skedder, Senyak ner nu hutseder, Uren haskayagan nu chansknedder, An havanagan an guner nu tagart nedder, Mimian yerevagal chanus mech. Hos gdesnem das nyakma anduniner, semera avili. Hon gparevem gayarani nashkadavor nere, knatsk nere u kedina avlor nere, mezi hodel u poschunk nere, serpor nere, semera shad avili. Hos gmadadzem te orme bidi hantibim, or peyausin yev evretigein, u gpandrem ziren kamen yegor katsornerun mech, amen ardu, ye pemen amen irigun. Girevagaem te aisan kam evretige otoi arkadzov mahatsads, or peos, anhetet, ashkari mech ke pandreir sirelin, uindibes ke kale, nyorki, paburinerun mech, guiri mebes, germak kavazani mehet zanelov amen karni urinere, senyakner nukhutsere, kusalov te gan haskayagan nchanskner, an havanagan anguner, pats kich tagartner, or peos, Mimian in Huiseun match, Gurgin Gdesne Evretigen, Parsi Hakusta Hakats, Herven Modenala, Parsanegan, Hunch Mazariger, Ujubida, Paitsai Sword, Arantinem Yorki Paburinerun match, Inchpes Amenardu, Yepemnal Amenirikon.
New York Tunnels Odysseus All we who live, it's clear, are nothing more than insubstantial phantoms, fleeting shadows. Sophocles, Ajax Mora Giles Watson, translator. Long are the tunnels of New York. They are long and noisy when every morning, sometimes every evening, I walk through its underground trails. Noisy are the tunnels of New York, noisy and smelly. But every morning, sometimes every evening, I walk through its snaky paths. Where are the secret passages, rooms and cells? Where are the gigantic corridors, improbable corners and traps? simply in my imagination. Here I see a dozen homeless people, in winter more. There I greet the station workers, trains and floor sweepers who clean the urine and vomit, in winter much more. Now I think that someday I will meet Orpheus and Eurydice, and I search for them among the throngs every morning, sometimes every evening. I imagine that this time Eurydice died in a car crash. Orpheus, distraught, searches for his beloved, and he walks like me through the tunnels of New York City. Like the blind, and a white cane probing every secret corridor, room, and trap. Hoping that there are huge corridors, unbelievable angles, but few traps. Orpheus hopes that once more, he will meet Eurydice in her bride's dress, walking towards him, her wedding bouquet and smile. But today I am alone in New York's underground tunnels, like every morning, sometimes every evening. Okay. This next piece is a short one. It's called Awakening. And I'm a very light sleeper. I always have pen and paper next to my bed just in case I wake up with an idea. Seldom happens, but one can only wish. Awakening. There is a moment before you realize you are awake, a split second before the gentle whisper from the heater, before the need for a glass of water or the removal of the sweater the cold night made you wear, a moment when your mind is occupied by a picture, before gray cells remember tomorrow's agenda or realize that morning is quite far off and the coffee is not already made, a pause before the regurgitation of last night's program, the excellent book turned into a bad film, the zests of the salad at dinner time, the fruity flavors of that red Zinfandel before the body overrules the mind to get up or turn in bed and return to oblivion, end the interregnum, ignore it completely, or take pen to paper and record it gently. I live in Northern Manhattan in uh, a section called Washington Heights. Uh, and there's a small enclave that for whatever marketing reason has been renamed Hudson Palisades. It has a view of the Hudson River and the Palisades Park. And this is a, a winter poem. Hudson Palisades, and the epigraph is by Sharon Olinka. The snow brings ancestors. In winter, I don't see them for days at a time. I leave for work, walking away from the steep cliffs. In the evening, they have drawn the curtains. When I see them dressed in a white shawl, they seem joyous as if the dark exposed limbs of the trees had made them feel somehow naked. The next poem is in memoriam to Neri Melkonian, who was an art historian and lived in New York City for about two decades. She was good friends with Tina Shakarian. That's how I met her, Susan, by the way. And um, she, she died, unfortunately, of cancer uh, about four years ago. To Neri, 
Your spirit lingers in a dozen books I have inherited, poems by Adonis, Balakian, Pasolini, some translated from tongues you spoke or still remembered. Sad days of light states one title. I want to live, screams another. In the lost pages, French stamps, postcards neatly typed, one thanking you for a charming dinner, another with your neat script never mailed, a receipt of books purchased in Boston, pencil marks underlining many words. I am like a voyeur peeking into your daily life of some 30 years ago, wondering who you were then, happy, sad. When was the last time someone brought you a book? The last time you read in bed and placed your glasses down to wipe tears of joy? When was the last time you stole a kiss? The next one is a, an imaginary correspondence. I'm going to read each season's stanza in Armenian, followed by the English. I will go back and forth. Yerevagayagan namagani. Tsimere sireli paregam. And this is, by the way, tongue in cheek. Tsimere sireli paregam. Amisema kikas luske desneu chemkigaran gerjan, te pazi and danikes and terzo bidunena. Yergo met tuna hachta harel, aveli turine can high and terzo in drama to chunera. Sun hintariet samaram surtin chem varjavats, petska portsem mitkas sunibes and pits bahel. Parevner dignoshit. An imaginary correspondence. It is winter, dear friend. My book will be published in a month's time, and I'm uncertain, dearest, if anyone other than my family will read it. It is easier to deal with two meters of snow than the moods of the Armenian public. It's been 35 years. I'm still not used to the cold weather, but I try to keep my mind as clear as snow. Best regards to your wife. <laughs> Panaster Zuchunda de Statsat and Akuchan Hedu, Gurgin Abris. Ait od ye pherbot signed of Zain the city. Artenga sky te volcan garevoded and danegan, Siro Meretian, Chuheranal. Credit sit with Sisaina Prigay Harcerun Massin, Caniner Meran, by its Mergian Kurgeshan Agri. Yere soon hint that ye Karnan Keretz Kuchen and Chemgestatsat, Ugaportsem Anorhead, Hokebes, Veradzenil. It is spring, dear friend. I received your poems with the audio recording and it once again, bravo. That day when I listened to the raspy clip, I realized the importance of staying close to familiar noises. You wrote about North Africa's political situation. So many perished and yet life goes on. It's been 35 years. I'm still famished for the beauty of spring and try to experience a spiritual rebirth along with it. Kisses to your kids. Amare Sirelis. Kholortsneles tagavin vokchen, u minchevai sor zargadz bunatsin. Patima askasadzen ir ansiergad kuna minchevashun. Aitirigun ye pachkeret kotsetsiru panaster zuchum ma ardasaneci, se dismec meds panma padretsav. Hokis match tapan setir. He says ye panty betsank tankarano chugatsa hosil. Ait nagar nerach kerus archemen dagavin. Ye resun hink darieve keskis passein. Parevner anzanut morat. It is summer, dearest. My orchids are still thriving. Until the day the flower buds stayed put, but they seem to have started their journey into dormancy. That evening when you closed your eyes and recited that poem, a large hole tore in my heart and you pierced through. Do you remember when we met at the museum and I was dumbstruck? Those paintings have remained in my mind's eye. It's been 35 years that I've been waiting for you. Best wishes to your mother whom I've yet the pleasure of meeting. Ashune Sireli Paregamuni. 
Ora de gıgançlan o karelu hamara bir cik betke. Kuzem an tatar tur sede bu dediğin o panagan lüsin het kagal. Ay şapat ku halawa bejibin et bedi sarkem. Ksan dariyara çep hos kabreyir. Ay anuşeren e bardastel sove tutir. O mişt kez girişem. Teğhemelu ote engeru ican. Kuyrerut parevner. It is fall, dear friend. The days are getting shorter and one needs to make an effort to write. I still want to roam outdoors, to play with the natural light. This week I plan to make your halawa bijibun. Some 20 years ago you taught me to make it when you were still living here, so I always think of you. It's tea drinking weather, dear friend. Best regards to your sisters. About a dozen years ago, uh, while visiting London, my sister-in-law's mom came also. And she suggested that we go to the Wallace collection. I had never been there before. And I saw an Orientalist painter's work, uh, Charles Zachary Landell. And I was fascinated by this woman in a red dress. And when I approached to see the label, to read the label, it said, an Armenian woman. So it's, it's a poem about her portrait of an Armenian woman. She wears her traditional, traditional dress and jewelry on her wedding day, or perhaps at her son's baptism, her firstborn in the arms of godparents, the procession on the altar, the priest anointing her dewy child and blessing him. But why this gaze of sadness? is a premonition weighing her mind. A century separates us and I wish to tell her she was right. There were many executions and deportations without justice or recognition. I want to know her name. Did her family survive? Could I be her descendant? And I hope to visit London soon, go see her again. A few pieces from my new book. This next one is, um, was originally the first poem in my manuscript. And my dear friend and mentor, the late Diana de Hovanesian said, thinking that my audience was solely Armenian, do you want to start with, with a poem about sex? I mean, you know how Armenians are. <laughs> Moods and the epigraph reads, the heart is a small cracked cup, easy to fill, impossible to keep full. James Richardson. I come to you tonight after a wonderful concert. I'm looking for love. I heard some Bach, Beethoven, then Schumann, not just any sonata, the F sharp minor, opus 11. I know that one so well. I sat there transported, envisioning myself in bed with you, naked and laughing, surrounded by sheets of paper, me reading poetry, you interrupting me with kisses, then making love. I come to you this evening after a walk in Washington Square Park. I'm looking for love. I was watching a painter splashing colors on a canvas, Indian yellow, cerulean blue, and zinc white, not just any paint, but Colors like winter solstice, the sky. I sat there transported, envisioning myself in bed with you. I come to you tonight after hearing a jazz quartet at bar 55. I was looking for love. I heard mellow tunes from the 60s, not just any composition, but Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage, music from our last night together. I sat there transported, envisioning myself in bed with someone other than you. Uh, this is a true story, very New York moment. Encounter. She sat on the number seven train westbound, mouthing words, reading a Korean Hangul text, eyes shut with concentration. I sat next to her, our hip bones touching on the crowded train. With an overnight bag next to her, I wondered what the note represented. A biblical passage, a speech perhaps. 
As travelers descended, we were left alone in the car. I finally dared to ask her what she was reading. I'm coming for my voice lesson, she said, and proceeded to sing an Italian aria to an audience of one. The second part of my book is mostly about travels. And um, um, I've been extremely lucky to have traveled to 38 countries so far, and some of them purely for poetry. So, Dawn. Dawn brings memories of minarets, mosques, and chants of Allahu Akbar, of seagulls flying into the ether, rides to airports in foreign cities, through unknown neighborhoods, main streets, and shanty towns. Sounds bring memories of prayers at weddings and burials, jazz tunes played on the phonograph amid voices of those who have passed on, nutcracker suites, and family reunions. Sunsets bring memories of walks in the park, moon gazes at dusk, and the marvels of this planet. Images bring memories of places where you made love with men no longer in the picture, sculptures that have weathered less than mortal bodies, paintings seen by the naked eye, magical compared to replicas in books. Experiences bring memories. Every flight reminds you of your first takeoff. Every storm replays a childhood nightmare. Every science class pronounces your hemophobia. Every trip to a coast re-energizes your love of oceans and beaches and how they kiss constantly. Sacro Speco. And the epigraph is by Charles Baudelaire. En vain, j'ai voulu de l'espace, trouver la fin et le milieu. In vain, I wanted to find in that space the end and the middle. When you and I are in the ground, this will be a different world. We will be in the ultimate sacred space, not the temporary one I have today where I write, nor the one I transport to the park to paint that great watercolor. In the sacred space, the focus is on the process or in the product. In the sacro speco, sit in your barren cell, germinate an idea, contemplate as Kafka did, as Saint Benedict instructed, as Rothko painted, as many envisioned. And for my last one, and thank you for being a great audience. Thank you to the Armenian Institute for inviting me. This last one is entitled, Today I Saw. And I'll be helped with the translation. Thank you. I saw Kordese Tankaran Ertal, Parevel Hon Abroch Quinere, Lucerno Shukere, Morna Lancialu Yerevagae la Bacan. I saw Kordese Kikartal, Verhishel Arodian, Gyanke Uhasarak Marta, Krel Kekvazner Usterzen, Nor Karaparne. I saw Kordese Nergel, Chapelu Gisel Turti Echere, Gadarel, Vertsinin Menabare, Nachkan Churinhead. Sida Panuchuna, Iktan Garma, Veratagam Bab Germa, Timatma, I saw Kordese Esterzen. We have our special guests now. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Adam, and uh, uh, so about a year ago, I, um, I was asked by the Poetry Society to prepare a, um, um, a poem for a workshop that they were going to do on their Young Poets Network, um, which is a fantastic place where they um, put loads of uh, resources and uh, writing challenges and all sorts of things um, online for young people to take part in, work on their poetry, read other things that people write it's a really good place so yeah they asked me to 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 take a poem from a from another language and um produce a bridge translation of it which would then be um posted as a challenge um, to the members of the young poets network um 
and they would use my bridge translation to create um, a poetic translation. So I chose um, I saw today, which uh, Lola has just read in Armenian. Um, uh, as I say, I made a British translation of it, and um, I'm very pleased to say as well that, um, or, or perhaps you already said this, Tatavik, uh, when I was uh, <laughs> when I had a bad connection earlier, um, that uh, the poetic, the translator, the the, the winner of the challenge, uh, Nadia Lyons, is. Uh, uh, at the top of my screen somewhere, and uh, she'll be at the top of your screens uh, as well. Um, so, there. There, Hi. there she is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. I've, I've loved hearing all of the poems. It's been really wonderful. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Um, so, yes, uh, I'll, I'll, read, uh, I'll read my bridge translation. Um, uh, and then I'll read uh, Nadia's translation. Um, the bridge one is obviously, well, but the nature of a bridge translation is that it's kind of, you know, unfinished uh, or, or uh, kind of try to be literal. Um, so it's not, um, there's, there's, a couple, there's a couple of, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, uh, yeah, I'll read it. Here we are. Today. Today my job is to go to a museum, to say hello to the colours that live there, the lights and shadows, to forget the past and imagine the future. Today my job is to read a book, to remember the everyday, life and the common man, to write poems and create new ideas. Today my job is to paint, to measure and to cut the pages of paper, to carry out the solo dance, menabar, of the, of the brush before it's flirting with the water. A self-portrait, an abstract picture, a mask. Today, my job is to create. And now I'll read Nadia's translation as well. Today, by Lola Kundakjian, translated by Nadia Lyons. I go to a museum today and say hello to the light living there, what is gone and imagine what I can let live on. I read a book today to remember an experience that I cannot understand and cannot have to dredge up poetry. I paint today, I cut measurements, I cut pages of paper, I dance alone, hands on the hips of my brush, teasing water. I make a self portrait picture in a dirty mirror, a mask, today I make. And I'll post the links to, uh, if you're interested, so Nadja's poem uh, as the first prize uh, winner of the, of, the of the challenge was published in uh, Modern Poetry and Translation, which uh, uh, you, may be, you may be aware of, um, very established and respected um, um, magazine of uh, translated poetry. Um, uh, and it's also on the Young Poets Network website. So I'll post her translation in the chat um, so you can read it um, at your leisure. Uh, when I heard, I was contacted last year by the Poetry Society for this project. I never thought that one day we would do this reading, that I'd see, meet you again, and I, that I would meet Nadia. I mean, this is, a, this is amazing. And it's almost a year ago. Right? So, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I'm extremely grateful. 